Hi, I'm Lester Martin from the enablement team here at Starburst Data. And I'm gonna spend a little time with you today and show you how with Starburst Galaxy, we can do federated queries. So a uh, couple things. First, what's Starburst Galaxy? Well, Starburst Galaxy is our uh, software as a service, cloud-based offering, zero install um, query federation tool that we have available to you. So you can go to starburst.io slash galaxy and you'll see this nice uh, sign up for free, getting up to $500 in usage. It's very easy to get started. We just ask for a few bits of information, creates an account and you're off and running. So it's uh, nothing, uh, there's no impedance that should slow you down to get on board really quick. Um, and what we'll be doing with that, we'll be doing a concept called Query Federation. Starburst Galaxy uh, sits on top of and utilizes the open source project Trino. And Trino on the homepage here has a nice little simple definition of, you know, query federation right here. Simply allowing ourselves to write a single query that's accessing more than one uh, data source. So we're going to write a system, we're going to write a query that's actually spanning um, Amazon S3, Object Store, uh, Redshift, Data Warehouse, as well as a MySQL, just traditional relational database management system. So I'm going to get going. I'm going to sign back into Starburst Galaxy and I'll give you a little quick tour while we're here. There's a good mention. Hey, I got my credit still remaining. So you'll get that stuff. You can upgrade. Uh, nice things about this GUI is real quickly is we have a couple things going on. We definitely have those catalogs. These are the, the conduits to different technologies out of the box. We just have a handful of sample data sets to play with. We're going to make some connections here in a second. We'll see that you can have n number of clusters. I have a simple one that's up and running already. We'll bind those catalogs to, to discrete stores to those clusters. Uh, and then we can go to our query editor and kind of walk this down. So tiny cluster is my uh, cluster name. These are my catalogs. For example, we'll just look at the sample catalog. And the sample catalog uh, has a schema called demo. And the demo uh, table has, uh, excuse me, demo schema has just a couple of uh, fields in there. So uh, a sample demo astronauts. And I'm gonna run this quick query. And what you should uh, really come to bear, if, if you don't worry about the results for a second, it's kind of a trick with uh, having this level of abstraction. We do not have a three-part naming convention, catalog schema, table. You have your normal use commands, et cetera. But, catalog schema table is something you would get used to. All right, so uh, I have a, usually have a lot of fun with these astronauts and stuff, but we wanna, we wanna do something a little bit more sophisticated than that today. So I'm gonna go over here under catalogs. And as I mentioned, I wanna connect to a couple different data sources. The first one, I wanna connect to Amazon S3. And we're just gonna call this our data lake. All right, data lake, no description really needed. Um, we wanna use our, AWS access key, give me a second to uh, copy and paste that on the side over here, there's that. And here comes my big bad uh, secret secret key, right about 12 more byte, pasting that in here. Yep, and then um, I'm gonna, I already have a uh, meta store, I'm using the Amazon Web Services Glue. Uh, my Glue setup is over here in North Virginia, but you have a couple different options, you can just create one from scratch, I wanna make sure I can create tables and so on and so forth, same connections, et cetera. So I'll test my connection, gives me a big hooray, I can use it. So let's connect this catalog. Now, once we connect the catalog, we need to do something with it. We need to bind it to one of those running clusters or a cluster. So I'm gonna connect it over here to tiny cluster. It's the single cluster I have. And he lets me know that, hey, um, you know, a consequence, we need to uh, push that connection into that cluster. So we have to take a quick moment here while that gets redeployed. Um, that's doing a quick updating. That's basically starting for us here. And once it gets up, I'll take a pause. And now it's running. So I'm gonna hit the query editor and I'm gonna open that same uh, explorer that we saw earlier. And you should see a whole new a catalog available. It's called Data Lake. Inside of Data Lake, I just have a couple um, uh, schemas. The main one I want to look at is transactions, and you'll see a couple tables in there. I went ahead and pre-created a couple queries that I want to run. So example, um, and we'll just introduce this data as we go. Uh, I've got some order data. 
typical commerce type activities. And I've got some orders and order lines. So these are these are not denormalized. An order has many uh, line items is what you see here. So I went ahead and pre-built a quick query. I'll highlight it and kick it off. Nothing, all that is sophisticated here. It's um, in the same place. These are backed by ORC files, ORC files. Uh, they're in an S3 bucket and I ran a join statement. Nothing too extravagant. You can do that uh, with other tools as well. So let's do, let's go forward and do a little bit more work with this. Let's go back to our list of catalogs, but this time let's configure another catalog. Let's uh, say we have some more data that's re related over here in Redshift. Now I'm creating names like Redshift, but you know, these may be logical names for you. Uh, I'm just gonna keep it kind of simple, make it clear what's going on here. I uh, got this running in AWS as well. So I'll enter my, my endpoint there, username and my password. Boom, boom, boom. And from there, quick test of the connection as before, hooray. Let's connect it to the catalog. Same thing, we're gonna add it to our cluster. So I'm gonna add it to tiny cluster. Same situation as before, I needed to kind of make that happen. So I'm gonna do a quick update here uh, that'll force uh, stop and a start of that activity. So we'll pause a second and let that come back online for us. Now that it's back online, we'll navigate back over to our query editor. There's other things I didn't point out. We got you know query histories. We can drill into all these queries, see how they've been doing, et cetera. But that's, we'll save that for another video. And I'm back over in our query. This time, um, what we should find, if I open up this Explorer, Explorer is a whole new, we still have Data Lake, you know, with its uh, transactions and orders and uh, line items. We created a new catalog here called Redshift. And inside of Redshift, I've got a schema called Master. And Master simply just has customer. All right, here we go. Let's just make sure we can read that table. Just grab a few records. Yep, there we are, customers with, you know, these are generated names and uh, phone numbers and stuff. And let's take the same query, I'll highlight it and run it, and then I'll just tell you what's going on here. It's actually the same query I did before, except I snuck in you know, one more join condition. So we have two, a join of two tables in the data lake, and then a join now of the customer table that lives in Redshift. Super fast, super quick, super easy. Um, me as a, an analyst or a data engineer or even a data scientist, you know, I can see this uh, as being extremely powerful and useful. So let's run with it one more time. So you probably see that over here, nation key of 19. So let's bring this query uh, full life cycle and actually do our join across three different data sets. That'll be uh, three different data sources, not data sets, completely different distributed data sources out there. So we'll configure yet another catalog. This time I'm just gonna use uh, MySQL, something I set up already. We're gonna call it, and again, I'm gonna use the technology name just to make it easy for us to kind of visualize this, but you know, you might have a more realistic uh, kind of name. I need a good old uh, uh, host that this is running on and username and password. And I'll put those in there. We'll hope that we get our hurrah statement. Hurrah, test connections was good. We'll, uh, we'll add this yet again to tiny cluster. So I'll show you that there. And again, we'll go back to clusters. I'm gonna kick this off while we're sitting here and uh, so they're updating. If you look at this thing, I'll open it up, the editing, you know, this is what, what we've done. We've made this one cluster see these various catalogs. You could have a ton of catalogs and have, again, as many clusters as you made sense, as it makes sense to you. And they could have, you know, many to many kind of, kind of relationships. So we're gonna keep it simple. We just have one cluster. It's already deployed, we'll go back. And I'm gonna look in here, I'm hoping to find Data Lake, I'm hoping to find Redshift, yeah, yeah. And we also found our MySQL. This one I've got a table called, of all things, Nation, Nation Lookups. So let's just go make sure uh, there's some data in there. Uh, likely there is, yep, it's only about 20 records, 25 records, so a variety of uh, uh, customers across several different uh, countries that belong to us. And then I'll just jump to the chase. What are we doing? We're gonna add, one more uh, table into our uh, federated query that's now just doing, let's pull in this nation as well. So as you saw, it all came back super, super fast. That's really what I wanted to take a few minutes to show you. Again, what do we do? We use Starburst Galaxy, which is definitely free to sign up, up to $500 in usage. Uh, don't even have to put a credit card in there. I encourage you to do it. Uh, but what do we really focus on? We showed how we can add 
in this data, data uh, federation layer, this uh, data visualization layer, multiple connections to various types of data sources. We do other things as well, search engines, uh, streaming systems, NoSQL databases, um, other cloud providers, other database providers, connect as many as those that make sense and move from uh, making our consumers know about all those data sources to have a single point to come to and then expect that single point to run at a high performance level and to offer us really awesome features like you just saw here, query federation across you know, n number of underlying different data sources. All right, again, my name is Lester Martin from Starburst. Uh, and I do want to remind you one more time, go to starburst.io uh, slash galaxy, sign up for Starburst Galaxy, get that free $500 of usage. I really appreciate you. Thank you now. Mm -hmm.